Hey everybody, it's Mark here at Studica with another video tutorial and today I'm going to be talking about how to create a graphical equalizer in LabVIEW 2010. Now LabVIEW, for those who may not know, is an engineering software developed by National Instruments. Um, I will be using a data acquisition device to uh, take in audio from my iPhone and then manipulate it with an equalizer in LabVIEW. Uh, the data acquisition device I'm going to be using is the National Instruments MyDAC and I'll be utilizing the 8th inch jacks on the side of it, the audio in and out ports. So I'll go ahead and hop into LabVIEW here, I'm going to make a blank VI. Now what I need up front is some controls to uh, change decibel levels or to change basically the voltage current that I'll be getting from my, uh, my DAC device. So this one will be my, um, this will be my main master control. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. I'm gonna change this name to master. And instead of 10, I'm gonna have it uh, scale to a factor of one because I'm going to be doing some multiplying and the way my math is going to work on the back end is going to require this. So I'm going to add uh, three more sliders and do the same thing. I'm going to make these scale factors of minimum to one. I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to call this guy my base. So he's going to be my low. And I'm going to copy him and paste another one. And it's going to be my uh, mids. And this is going to be a very, very, very basic uh, equalizer. It's just going to be three bands. It's going to be a high pass filter, a low pass filter, and a mid band uh, Q. And it'll be able to basically hear the difference when I'm all said and done here. And this guy, I'm going to call him my treble. So mid highs and lows, most common things that you're going to mess with. So I'm also going to want to be able to see. Uh, what my waveform looks like after we mess around with it. So I'm going to add a uh, graph, a waveform graph. I'm going to make this guy a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to right click on him and go to properties because I need to change his x axis. Instead of time, I want to say frequency. And instead of auto scale, I want it to show me between 20 and 10,000 because those are the frequencies I want to see from our waveform. And oh, I'm going to go back into properties because I need to change my y-axis from uh, auto scaling I want to be able to see between negative 100 and 0 dB or 0 decibels so I know how loud my uh, my music is so now I've got that all worked out uh, I want to go ahead and get around to the programming on the back end here so it's already got my uh, it's already got my uh, indicators sorry my my number markers it's already got them on the back end here so what I need to do up front is add my while loop so that my program continues to run all the time. And uh, I need to first add a DAC assistant under my input menu because I need to be able to acquire my signal. So I'm gonna tell it to do an acquire signal. It's gonna be an analog input. It's gonna measure voltage of my audio input left and right. And again, I'm gonna have my phone plugged into my audio inputs and then it's going to play out music uh, to our machine here. So. Uh, what I need to do under voltage 0 and 1, I need to change the signal input range from a maximum of 10 down to 2 and a minimum of negative 10 up to negative 2. That's just because that's what the audio in the MyDAC works with. Um, and down here under my timing settings, the acquisition mode, I'm going to do continuous samples. I'm going to tell it to read at... Uh, I'll just do... Um, I'll do 10K. There we go. And I'm going to have a rate of 48K, which is kind of the standard for uh, studio audio. Well, there's 44.1 and 48. Some people use different ones, but I'm just going to go with 48 here. So I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm going to be able to uh, send out my audio data that I have on my input that's coming from my phone. I'll be able to actually filter the signal and then use the sliders to change the voltage amount of that signal coming in. So, so what I need to do is grab certain parts of my sound because I have bass, mids, and treble. So I'm going to right click, I'm gonna do, where's it, analysis. I'm gonna filter, I'm gonna add a filter. It's gonna bring this up. I'm gonna do a, a low pass filter and the cutoff frequency. I'm gonna do a 400 for the cutoff frequency. Now I'll hit okay and 
I'm going to call that base. Then I add a, another one of those. So there's going to be three total because I have three bands that I want to work with. And this one is going to be just a band pass. I'm going to do the low cutoff at 400. And then the highs, I'm going to go all the way up to um, 5,000. And the high pass will filter out the rest of those. So I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to call this uh, mids. And then I'm going to add one more filter. And this one is going to be a high pass. And this is going to, uh, the cutoff is going to be from 5,000 up because that's what my um, band pass was cutting off at, which was 5,000. So I'm going to hit OK. And so now what this is going to do, I'm going to wire my inputs to all three of these, is, uh, to all three of these. And that's basically going to take the sound from my phone and it's going to filter the actual uh, the voltage from the different frequencies out into separate pieces of data, which I can manipulate with these. So since I have all these as a going up to one, I'm basically going to do a multiplication. I'm going to tell the filtered signal of the base to be multiplied. So I'm going under the right click menu, arithmetic and comparison, I'm going under numeric, I'm going under multiply. I'm going to put one of those there. I'm going to tell my, there we go, my base control to send to that multiplication and then the filtered signal of my uh, input to send to that multiplication. So now the 400 and below frequency area, the voltage of that is going to be coming in a multiplication of whatever we have set here with a total of one which would bring it back up to the normal decibel level so the idea is that if I go below one it will multiply it by say uh, half so it will cut it in half if I bring it down to 0.5 so we'll hear only half of the base that we normally would that's the idea behind this so I need to do that to the other ones as well the mids and the treble so I'm going to add uh, another multiplication I'm going to copy this one I'm going to paste him down there and so I'm going to send my filtered mid signal there and then my mid control there and I'm going to do the same thing with my treble parts so my filtered signal to the multiplication the treble multiplication whoops kind of missed the line there we go and now I need to add all these signals together to get a whole new sounding waveform and then send that out to a master switch. So I'm going to right click arithmetic comparison, numeric, going to add a, do an ad addition. I'm going to take the multiplication of these two values, I'm going to send it to the addition formula, and then I'm going to take the multiplication of the mid values and send it also to the addition formula. And then I'm going to add another addition formula. So I'm basically just stacking the signals on top of each other so that they all fit in together uh, appropriately and with the modified control so that if we change any of these uh, those get sent to the final output of the waveform and alters the sound of what we're hearing. So I'm going to send this multiplication to this addition table and then I'm going to send the sum of all of these to this addition table so now our signal is one whole cohesive unit. And then ultimately what I need to do at the end is multiply this entire signal by whatever our master volume set at. That way we can control the uh, overall level of the modified wave that we are hearing. So I'm going to go under arithmetic to comparison, numeric, multiply, add that there. I'm going to send my master control to it. And I'm going to send the sum of all these parts to it as well. And then what I need to do is I need to be able to take this overall value, this overall voltage of our waveform from my phone that we've modified now by this point, and I need to be able to display it on this graph. So what I need to do is do a signal analysis and add a spectral measurements. I'm going to click that there. On the wizard that pops up, I'm just going to do a power spectrum, and uh, just because that's the way I like to look at it, I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to tell it to send it the signal here and then output to the wave graph. And uh, that's gonna allow me to see my modified waveform uh, show up over here as I change 
the different values. So the last thing I need to do is be able to tell this whole signal to output from my audio output uh, into my computer so we can hear it. So what I need to do is right click and go to output, DAC assistant, and I'm going to click in there. And I tell it to generate a signal. It's going to analog output. It's going to generate voltage. I'm going to do my audio output left and right. Hit finish. And then here I need to match my same settings. So I'm going to do 2 and negative 2. Click there. Do a 2 and a negative 2. And choose uh, continuous samples. And I think I did 10K if I recall. And hit OK. But I'm going to double check because I want that to match up. Yeah, okay, so I did 10K, we're good. And then I need to send my new modified signal out to my output so then we can hear it. So what I'll go ahead and do is um, I'll set all these up to their normal values with the volume a little bit down. Uh, I'm having some weird ground hum issues, so I have my volume muter right now, uh, but I'm gonna unmute it and then I'll have a line feed coming into lab view. And so now you kind of hear that crackling. That's a result of my ground hum. So uh, now if I run my lab. Star. I think my track was just ending. There we go. So you can hear my track playing. And you can hear if I start dropping things. You can hear me change the values, and you can see them uh, popping up on the let on the uh, the graph monitor. It's changing, and you can see that if I bring up my treble, you see the high spectrum popping up, and you can hear it come in. And then if I raise up my bass, you can hear that start coming in. try and get a sound that you like. So that's the basic idea. And um, yeah, so that's how that works is I have my phone playing that track and that's going into my audio and on my my deck. And then I have a uh, another eight inch, sorry, eighth inch uh, cord coming out of my audio out and it's feeding into my line in my computer, which is how you guys are hearing it uh, through the recording uh, with the modified sound. And I apologize again for the ground hum, but you know, I have, I made poor power supply choices apparently. <laughs> so uh, hopefully that gives you all an idea of um, how to make a very basic graphic equalizer. And thanks for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the, uh, the comments section or leave them on our blog and let us know. Thank you.